Hello, this is Telecom TV. We're in the City of London at the Great Telco Debate 2019. And I'm talking with an old friend, Marcus Brunner, Head of Standardization, Open Source and Ecosystem Development at Swisscom. Now we've got that out of the way, Marcus, welcome. Good to see you again. <coughs> I want to talk about Cloud Native. Um, do you think Cloud Native is a must do or a would be nice to do if we had the opportunity for CSPs, CSPs as the transition towards digital service provider accelerate? For me, it's very clearly a must do. It's clear that the cloud native way of doing things is sort of the current best practice in all other industries. And so we need to adapt that. There are a lot of benefits at different fronts and in different dimensions. I don't see how we cannot do it. Well, straightforward and to the point. OK, thank you. Can we talk about use cases then? Um, what use cases do you believe will generate near-term revenue opportunity for CSPs at the edge and why? Yeah, there are several use cases. I mean, one thing is, is uh, basically an operational efficiency gain, which we hope to achieve with, with uh, Cloud Native. Then there is a customer experience enhancements. Specifically, if we talk about having APIs to talk to certain components in our networks, combining different things like IoT backend systems with 5G backend systems, this combination, you need to get that implemented somehow. And going to cloud native, that's much easier to do than with today's technology. If you had to pick a key driver for change in the market with regard to um, cloud native, let's begin with the technology is the base that we accept is there, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about it. What do you think is a key driver, Marcus? Business models, investment, organizational culture, or the skill set within the organization? Yeah, the largest driver, I think, is the organizational culture, because that's sort of really the different way, and to transform into this new way of doing things is sort of the main driver. Naturally, having benefits in the investments and in the skill set as, as well. But I think the main driver is, is cultural. And as you said, technology is sort of the baseline thing you need to, or is part of this transformation. So you need a bit of that baseline, otherwise you cannot do the rest. Indeed. How difficult is it in terms of changing culture as far as you're concerned? What have you observed from Swisscom and what have you seen in other CSPs or telcos that you know about? Yeah, at Swisscom we, we have a bit of an advantage that we already do like quite some time, some IT work and so on. So it's yeah. not, not that terribly new for us, but I see a lot of CSPs struggling with, with that new way of, of doing things. So in that uh, side, we as uh, Swisscom are a bit, bit ahead, probably also due to our size. It's much smaller and so it's easier to do a bit of change. And the people in Swisscom, all of them are willing to learn new things. So it's inherently in the culture already that we want to be looking into new stuff uh, which comes along. So it's, it's relatively easy that people embrace that. You're very fortunate to be able to do that because several people I've spoken to said it's not like turning an oil tanker. It's much, much more difficult than that. It takes forever to get a cultural shift and to start swinging around the compass and it needs to be speeded up. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that, but I mean, I, uh, you can only go with a certain speed <laughs> on that. Yeah. So it's, it's, there are limits, limits to the speed, and you can always argue whether you go too quick or too slow. But that's only, that one you only know after, after the fact, not before. So it's very, very difficult to give advice on that. Okay. Do you think CSPs uh, should regard the hyperscalers as competitors? or potential future business partners? I think more they are future business partners because I mean, both of them bring different assets to the table. So I don't see there is a, probably a little bit of, of competition, but by, by and large, we also uh, live out of uh, hyperscaler providing nice uh, services which need a lot of bandwidth and, 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 and networking and connectivity. So it's, it's sort of a a give and take type of, of a relationship. I think it's, it's quite a good relationship. Focusing on Swisscom now, what work have you done within Swisscom with Cloud Native so far? 
Yeah, basically we have done two things. I mean, I personally was uh, sort of doing standardization work towards cloud native in the Etsy NFV and a bit in Kubernetes and OpenStack. And then uh, the other thing is that we have now first versions of cloud native network functions, which we are trying out, testing and try to bring them to a commercial network. As far as cloud native is concerned, you mentioned you know, you're getting ready to roll out virtual functions and so on. How do you see cloud native rolling out now within Swisscom? And how will you be rolling it out in the longer term? What is the plan, the roadmap? Oh, that's, the roadmap is very difficult to, to, to say. There are first functions now. I mean, we need to learn that new way as well. And at the moment, it's largely also containerized. And there's a bit more to cloud native. As I said, there is CI/CD discussion, uh, packaging, software shipping, quick upgrades, and things like that. So a lot of features people normally attribute to cloud native, we have not done yet. So we have, there is a lot of other topics which which come along and come with it. So I think that's sort of the next steps we're gonna we're gonna go to. What are the main challenges that you, as Swisscom at Swisscom, face with the adoption of cloud native? What is the most difficult aspect, do you think, and what is the surprisingly easiest? Yeah, so it's very interesting that it's, it feels much, much easier today with the cloud native versions to install things than it was with, with the virtualized uh, uh, versions. So it is there. We already see a benefit there, how easy things, things are. Um, the sort of the downside is you have a lot more components. So from a management perspective, you need to look into much more things. And if something goes wrong, you have much more things to check about. So it's, it's, it's operationally a bit of a, of, of a challenge to run that. But we, we need automation anyway. So we also need an automated way of doing a lot of those things as well. That will come. I'm intrigued, Marcus, that you say it's easier. Why is it easier? It's the approach of the current, for example, the cloud, cloud native technologies. It's much more of an intent based thing. You say, I want to do the thing X, Y, Z, and the system just does it. So run the script, install all of that components, scale it to the level you need. If, if you need something more, it scales automatically. If there is a failure, it failovers automatically, things like that are sort of just coming with it, huh? it's, it's sort of inherent in the, in, in the systems. Before we had to do a lot of it manual or through management systems. Indeed. Okay, final question. How confident are you that your suppliers, the vendors and your partners are up to speed with cloud native? Are they where you would expect them to be? And can you help them if they're not? Yeah, I think we, we help them a lot to get up to, uh, up to speed. I mean, some are further than, than others. Sure. And also with the, the same supplier, different departments of the, the supplier is at different stages. So, but it's, I'm very, very positive. It has been taken up. I mean, through all these activities, talking always with you, Martin, on the topics, people look at those things and, and sort of the thing is moving. And I don't think we are, we are going back anywhere soon. <laughs> Good interview, Marcus. Excellent as usual. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Martin.